The Yellow River is China's second biggest river. It is seen as the birthplace of China's civilization and is a source of much of its prosperity. Yet at the same time, the Yellow River has brought great tragedy to the Chinese people, thus the nickname China Sorrow. Major floods throughout the years, natural or otherwise, have killed hundreds of thousands of people. For its first great achievement, the People's Republic sought to bring China's sorrow under the control of man. Thus came about the country's first great dam, the Sanmen Cha. The Yellow River is the most silt-heavy river in the world. This mud comes from the lowest plateau. This area is home to China's cradle of civilization. Its soil is some of the most erodible in the world. A few days of rain can trigger a dozen mudslides. For farmers downstream, the silt helps make the North China Plain a fertile farming ground. But the lowest can also bring too much of a good thing. Its soil is so highly erodible that the little bit of rain would trigger torrential mudslides pouring into the river. And when those rains come and erode away their farms, farmers can no longer produce food. It leads to one of the big consequences of the Yellow River floods. The huge number of deaths come not only from the actual flood, but also the famines that follow. This silt also gives dam engineers headaches because it shrinks the capacity of any potential reservoir. It will literally fill up the whole thing with mud. The Japanese had their eyes on damming the Yellow River during the Second Sino-Japanese War, with the Sanmen Sha Gorge area being the top candidate. They never tried anything because of their defeat at the end of World War II. Good. Because had they tried, they would have failed because of this serious silting issue, which their documents show that they clearly did not see coming. A few Americans managed to review the area before the communist victory in 1949. They said that the Sanmen Sha area would be ideal for a power generating dam. But the silt and flood issues would make such a dam difficult to maintain without first addressing the soil erosion issues on the Los Plateau upstream. In 1942, American soil conservationist Walter Lodermilk experimented a bit with planting grasses and trees, as well as building, quote, soil dams, end quote, across the landscape before the American government ended the project for budgetary and war reasons. Before leaving, the Americans recommended that any Yellow River dam be primarily for flood control, not power generation. To best serve such a purpose, the dam would have to be set 100 kilometers downstream from Sanmen Sha at the Bali Hutong area. Ten years later, the PRC government did investigate a potential Bali Hutong dam with the goal of more robust flood control. But doing so would leave the millions of people in the Shanxi province fully exposed to the whims of the Yellow River's floods. The provincial government argued against such a situation. One of the first things the newly established People's Republic of China government wanted to do was to help this vastly rural country industrialize and modernize. Part of this industrialization plan involved damming the Yellow River for clean power generation. In 1954, the newly installed Communist Party of China invited a number of Soviet advisors to review a potential dam for the Yellow River at the Sanmin Sha Gorge area. It would be the start of a series of industrialization projects performed in the name of Sino-Soviet friendship. The project faced challenges from the very start. What did the government want the dam to be? Should it be first and foremost for flood control or hydroelectric power? You can't make a dam that does both really well. Different ministries had different priorities. For several years, the Soviet team taught Chinese how might to build a dam across the Sanmin Cha. They offered a design that balanced between flood control, agricultural water storage, and hydropower generation. It seemed promising, and construction would begin in earnest by 1955. But changing winds in the Sino-Soviet partnership caused Stalin to completely recall the team by 1960. It left the Chinese on their own for the rest of the project. Zhou Enlai himself expressed concern about damming the Yellow River at the Sanmen Sha. A PRC commission set up in the 1950s had performed an experiment to try and figure out how bad the silting issue really was. They created a small reservoir, expecting it to be filled within 10 years. The silt filled the reservoir in just three. Zhou would say at a state council meeting, quote, It is possible that the San Min Sha reservoir would be clogged quickly. Despite the fact that the project has been started, 
I feel uneasy about it. The dam design given to the Chinese by the Soviet engineers tried to make the most of a difficult situation, and efforts were underway upstream to improve the soil erosion issue on the Lowe's Plateau. Even so, it seemed clear that the dam would be silted within 50 years. The Soviets presented this as an acceptable trade-off. Yeah, sure, at the end of 50 years, you'll have to abandon the dam or spend a lot of money cleaning it out, but think of about all the great things will be before that happens. Huang Wanli, a hydraulic professor at Tsinghua University with family ties to Mao Zedong, criticized the design for something that he felt was obvious. The upstream soil erosion efforts are not working well enough. The 50-year estimate was made assuming the soil erosion effort would be wildly, irrationally successful. He also added that to try to artificially mess with the Yellow River silt situation would cause substantial consequences in the future in ways we won't know until they happen. Huang had no hope of stopping the project. Mao himself wanted it after all. But he suggested modifications. He argued against recommendations by the Soviets that the dam reservoir be set at 360 meters above sea level. In addition, he wanted there to be the possibility of river water flowing through in case the reservoir gets filled with silt, and so pushed for a diversionary river channel built during the dam's construction to be made permanent. However, Huang had run afoul of Mao Zedong. Mao had little respect for intellectual types. His physician's memoirs make it clear. And he felt that Huang's technological complaints were in fact complaints against the party itself. This is, of course, unacceptable. Mao had Huang declared a rightist and removed. You see, by now the party was crowing about the dam's progress and future benefits, telling everyone and their mother that this dam would help bring about the industrialization of China through the benefits of hydropower. Propaganda pumped up the dam to the people, telling them that under the leadership of the party, nothing can stop the Chinese people from achieving their goals. It's a lot to live up to, and behind the scenes, the party was trying to balance different ideas and goals to bring this dam into reality. Because of the dam's high profile and visibility, resolving these required a surprising number of really senior party members, none of whom were engineers, to get involved. For example, the crucial 360 meter height of the reservoir. Note that this doesn't represent the dam's actual height as is the dam is built at a 353 meter elevation above sea level. Communist Party Secretary of the Shaanxi province, Zhang Desheng, requested to have the height lowered. Not just because they were worried about the repercussions of the silt load, if the reservoir is full of mud then guess where the water will go, but also because raising the water level of the reservoir just 10 more meters means some 300,000 more people needed to be moved from their ancestral homes due to flooding. And it puts the water just 40 kilometers from the critical industrial city of Xi'an. Relocating villages on such a large scale would be difficult. To be honest, the Shanxi government probably didn't want the dam in the first place, but the local officials knew what would happen if they said such a thing. But lowering the water level from 360 would affect the dam's hydroelectric power generation, and that was no good. So, will it be 360 meters, or 350 like the Shanxi government wanted, or 336 as some other technicians recommended? To deal with all these different requests, Zhou Enlai himself went to San Mingxia and convened a big meeting with members from the local governments, the government ministries, and the dam commission. Now all together, they hashed things out. Two senior leaders of the CCP, Peng Dehuai, former general of the PLA, and a guy named Xi Zhongshun, whose son you may be familiar with, argued for retaining the 360 meters. It would help put China on a path of industrialization and bring its economy on the same level as that of Great Britain within 15 years. This was a public party goal, and much was staked on achieving it. Zhou Enlai, however, was a pragmatic and thoughtful guy. Always has been, and I personally admire that. He struck a softer tone, admitting that much about the river has yet to be known and negotiated a compromise. 360 meters, but to be achieved after 1967. Before 1967, 325 meters. 
Doe's conservative feelings would be affirmed just a few years later when everything started to go wrong. By 1960, the dam was largely completed and the reservoir behind it began to fill with river water. Then things started to go very wrong. From late 1960 to mid-1962, some 1.5 billion tons of Yellow River silt poured into the reservoir, far more than anyone ever estimated. By 1964, a third of the reservoir's capacity was lost, declining from 9.8 billion cubic meters of water to 5.74. Worse yet, the silt clogged the mouth of the Wei River, a tributary that feeds into the Yellow River. Water then backed up and submerged valuable farmland. The flood then leached into groundwater supplies. Farmers lost both their ability to grow food and get fresh water. The San Manshah's water uh, outlets are set rather high at about 325 meters. This is in contrast to the Three Gorges Dam, which has three outlets set at varying heights along the dam wall. Because the San Manshah's outlets were placed so high up, over 60% of the silt entering the reservoir stayed there. The government had hyped the dam's hydropower generation capabilities, but for now this will need to be sacrificed to deal with the silting issues. After consulting with technicians, they, in 1964, authorized adding two new tunnels on the dam's north banks, as well as the repurposing of four steel pipes originally meant for generating hydroelectric power to funnel silt water out of the reservoir. By 1964, the silt had filled half of the reservoir and further reconstruction would be needed. The dam's outlets were lowered from 300 meters to 287. Secondly, the commission took Professor Huang's suggestion of having the diversionary water channel be made permanent. Eight outlets that had been closed during construction were reopened. These two renovations greatly compromised the dam's hydroelectric capacity but improved the silting issue. By 1973, the dam began to operate in a normal cyclical manner, and China learned an immense amount of information that its engineers would further apply to future dams. Today, the San Manisha manages a drainage area representing 92% of the Yellow River's total drainage area, offering strong flood protection for the people living there. The San Manisha remains very well regarded in Chinese history. Its construction is a story of the challenges of building and delivering on the promises of extremely complicated large-scale engineering projects. And it also demonstrates the party's dedication towards industrialization, as well as its determination to fix projects after they've gone wrong. I think a recurring theme that I keep coming to again and again with videos like these is that multi-sided decisions are hard, and there isn't always an obvious way forward even when approached using, quote, science and engineering. It's like what I mentioned back in the Taiwan pork video. The science can't be the end-all be-all because the science doesn't actually really say anything. It's not impartial because humans have to interpret it. Someone on the outside might look at the situations and make big sweeping claims in the comment section, like as if there was a definitive answer all along. Oh, the science is clear that we should optimize the dam for this and that. But the reality you will find, and as the party found out, is that you gotta make trade-offs. You gotta make human interpretations, and you gotta be okay to make mistakes. I don't fault the party for making a decision like what it did. Uh, not necessarily building the dam, but actually building the dam to optimize for hydro, and then making the compromises afterwards. Ironically enough, I think the party was the right authority to make such a call. Balancing and satisfying multiple people with different wants is politics. And that's what the party is all about. All right, everyone, take care of yourselves. See you later.